I guess the first question to answer is what is an array? And I can draw a comparison. So here I've created a variable called x. And we know already that that's one storage location of type int. And if I create a second variable later called y, then that's another independent storage location of type int. Maybe x and y are meant to mean something together, but in the eyes of the compiler and the language, they are just completely separate things. An array is a way of creating multiple storage locations of exactly the same type usually to refer to a sequence of values. Um, and the, the typical understanding is if you create an array for some reason, your intention isn't just that the elements of the array be of the same type, but that they are somehow related. So here's an example of an array. It might have type int. And then here's some numbers that might show up inside that array. And so I am allowed to create an array, a sequence, made out of elements of any type. And that's a key, just like we talked about with pointers, this idea of things applying to any type is significant. I can make an array of anything that's a type. And it turns out that arrays themselves are types, and therefore I can make arrays of arrays if I want to. But let's start with an array of five ints. So I'm going to call this array a, uppercase a, of just like any other variable. You can have the name of an array be multiple letters if you want. Um, just like how I often use x and y or i and j for single ints, I like to use the name a or b, a capital A, capital B, for arrays. So I want to create an array with five elements. So here it is, int a square bracket and just to be clear, when you create the array, you can have the expression inside the brackets be anything you want. 5 plus 5 plus k plus j, whatever you want, just like any other, um, the way you'd compute the argument to a function or the right-hand side of an assignment statement, there can be an expression in here. The key is, as of line number 22, I have now declared a new variable, uh, which I would say has type array of 5 ints. And it's significant that the size of the array is, in a sense, part of the type. Now, the next question is, how do we draw this? And in C, it's a little bit strange. And you may have to bear with me for a week or so while I draw my arrays that look like this. So here's an array. I've made it to have uh, five elements. So OK, that's there are the five elements. But I'm going to draw ar my array on my diagram to look like this. The type is notionally an array of uh, five ints. But I'm going to draw it with this strange looking arrow. And one thing I'll observe is, unlike with a pointer, the arrow is not inside a box. A refers to the arrow pointing to the beginning of this sequence here. Now, in practice, as you'll see in a minute, when we talk about A, we talk about A as if it means this collection of five things. That's one thing. So bear with me for why I'm drawing my diagram that way. The next thing is, how do I know which element is which? I have created a collection of five int values. Everything inside of a particular array must have the same type. If I want to mix together ints and doubles, an array is not the correct structure for that. So the next issue is I number the individual elements of my array. And one thing that always throws people off um, is that the numbering begins at zero. And there is actually a very good reason for this. We'll see it in a couple of weeks. It relates to pointers. So make of that what you will. Um, the first element of the array is index zero. The second element is at index one. The third element is at index two, um, and then so on. And that means if I have an array of size five, the last element in the array will have number four, because the first one um, is at index zero. And then in here, I would put the actual values. So all I have on my diagram so far is a representation of what the array looks like on the outside, not what it contains, because as you can see on line 21, I haven't actually put anything in it yet. All I've done is declare a variable. So the key thing to understand here is that A, the type of A, is array of five ints. The 5, the size of the array, is part of the array's type. And just like how you can't change the type of a variable, that means you can't change the size of an array if you declare it this way. If you want an array whose size you don't know, so an array that may have any size, for now you have to work around that. If you think, I don't know how big to make my array, one option is to make it really big and then hope you never need all that space. We'll see at the end of the course there are a few options for some flexibility there, but generally speaking, um, and certainly for assignment 4 and assignment 5, you should assume all arrays have a fixed size. So you need to know how big the array needs to be before you create it. And once you create it, you cannot resize it if you declare it like this. 
All right, so that's nice. There's my array A. That was an easy task. Uh, what about my array B? This is supposed to be an array of 10 elements of type double. Let's see if I can draw an array that big with the screen drawing. Uh, not great. OK, well, we'll work on that. Um, and so here's my array B of type uh, double. And we can draw that as an array just to make it clear. OK, and so then this would be element 0 of B, and this would be element 9. So. There we go. Uh, and so I have to declare it like this, double B square bracket 10. So the size of the array is 10, and that will be the size forever until the variable B goes out of scope and gets destroyed. OK, great. So I've just created these two arrays, and I want to set them to contain values. I want to actually use the elements of the arrays. So the first task is fill the array A with the values 6, 10, 17, 116, and 111. So what I want to talk about is how do I refer to one of the elements of this sequence of five things? And I use this operator, uh, this square brackets operator here to, we call this the subscript operator. And the logic is um, I might refer to a sequence of values in a mathematical context as A0, A1, A2, you know, and so on. That's how I talk about a sequence in math. But obviously, I don't have the ability on my keyboard to make tiny subscript numbers. And so instead, in C, we use the square brackets and we put the subscript in there. And you'll often hear me refer to A subscript 0 or A sub 1 or something. And what I'm referring to, that's my way of reading the square brackets operator. So the thing inside the square brackets has to be a number, and it has to refer to a valid entry of the array. So if the array has size 5, like A does, the valid entries are index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, and index 4. So I can write A sub 0 equals whoops 6. A sub 1 equals 10. Just get that, scroll that, whoops, scroll that down. And then A sub 2 equals 17. A sub 3 equals... Uh, 116 and a sub 4 equals 111. And to be clear, when you've actually attached the square brackets to the name of the array, so this expression here, a sub 0, a is an array of elements of type int. It is an array of five ints. If I refer to one of those elements, so I write a sub 0, this behaves exactly as a variable of type int. So if I made a variable x of type int, it could be used in all the same places I can use the expression a sub 0. I could write a sub 0 equals 6. I could write a sub 1 equals a sub 0. Whoops, a sub 0 plus 4, whatever. I can use it just like I would use any other variable of that element type. And it behaves just like any other int in this context. All right, so I filled the array up with values. We'll see in a future video there is an easier way if you want to set the entire array to have initial values and to write five assignment statements. But uh, we need to learn the basic way first. OK, next task. Print out the first and last values in A. OK, so we'll print out first value in A. What's the first value in A? It'll be the element at index 0, so A sub 0. I guess I should also update my, whoops, I should update my diagram here to reflect the new values inside of the array A. So I set A sub 0 to be 6, A sub 1 to be 10, A sub 2 to be 17, A sub 3 to be 116, and A sub 4 to be 111. All right, um, and then if I want to retrieve a particular value, if I say a sub 0, I'd go to my diagram, I'd look at a, and I'd say, now get me index 0 of that array. Um, so the first value in a is a sub 0. a is an integer array with five elements. That means the last value has index 4. So remember that the last valid index of the array is always one less than the size of the array because indices start at zero. And I'm sorry that that's confusing, but you will probably believe in a couple of weeks why we need to start counting at zero like this. So let's try compiling and running this. And we'll ignore that unused variable thing. The first value in A is 6. The last value in A is 111. All right. Um, the next task here is fill up the array B with the values 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up to 0 0.9. In other words, what I want to do is start with the value 0 and then add 0 0.1 at each step up to 0 0.9. So I want something like this. My diagram is pretty bad. In fact, actually, let's, um, let's just get rid of that and then 
try that again. Still not great, but, but we're working on it. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9. And that coincides with index 0, index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine. And so you might notice if you draw it out like this that what you really want is for the element at index 3 to be 0 0.3, 3 over 10, and the element at index 4 to be 4 over 10. What we want to do is think of whether there's a way of setting the elements of b without having to go through and run a bunch of assignment statements. We want to make it convenient to work with a large amount of data at once. We want to avoid, like we saw in the previous video, that problem of having to treat um, 10 values as 10 separate independent things. And the key insight here is that these, this subscript operator, the square brackets, give us a really easy way of automating um, which element of the array that we're talking about. So I'm actually going to write a loop. Um, I'll notice that what I want is b sub 0 equals, well, I guess b sub 0 is 0 divided by 10. b sub 1 equals 1 divided by 10.0. You could also write this as uh, 0 0.1 times the index. So what, either is fine. Um, the key is you might notice that at each step, uh, if you write this out in full like you've been, like you did back when, we, when you were designing the first few loops that you ever wrote, you might notice that the automation is sort of obvious. B sub whatever equals whatever divided by 10. Exactly the kind of thing that you can automate with a loop. And the key point is that you are allowed to put any expression inside the square brackets. It doesn't have to be a number. It can be an expression that gives you a number as long as the result has type int. And so I'm going to write a for loop or a while loop that can do this. I guess we'll start with a, a while loop. So int i equals 0, my first index. While i is less than or equal to 9, which is my last index, uh, I want to set b sub i equals i divided by 10.0. And then I want to increment i. All right, so I'm going to try running that uh, before I, I um, go further with this problem because I want to I want to just prove that that works. So I'm going to print out. I'm going to actually copy this thing. All right, first value in b, last value in b, and then I print out this and b contains it's an array of type double and so i want to make sure i use percent f instead so we'll try running that and we can see that the uh the first value in uh b is zero the last value in b is not 0 0.4 but that's my fault because i tried printing out b sub 4 instead of b sub 9 so we'll try that that was a predictable problem with copying and pasting. I should learn, have learned my lesson by now. And there we go. The first value in B is 0. The last value in B is 0 0.9. And we can see up here, I can set an element of B by referring to it by index, even if the index is um, the result of computing some expression. Now, I want to touch up a bit of this code. So the first thing is, I actually personally really prefer writing for loops if I work with arrays. And so I'm going to get rid of this. Um, I find that this while loop looks busy. It looks un it, it actually more complicated than it needs to look. The loop I would write looks like this. For int i equals 0, i is less than 10. Not less than or equal to 9, i++. plus plus. Now you can convince yourself that this condition here is exactly the same as this condition here. But you'll notice that a lot of people, when they write code involving loops, really like to use less than instead of less than or equal to. And the reason is because we know that the last real index of b is index 9, because counting starts at 0. But the size of b is 10. And so if you use less than instead of less than or equal to, you can in your loop just refer to the real size of the array and not have to worry about that funny indexing problem. So at each step, b sub i equals um, i divided by 10.0. We'll try that, run that to make sure that that works. And it does. Um, I want to actually add one more task here. We'll pretend it was in the specification all along. Um, print out every element of b on the same line. 
So what I want to do is now use a loop to loop over all of the elements of B. And the key thing here is to observe that because I've done this with a loop, if I decided that B was now going to have 100 elements instead of 10, it wouldn't be too tough. I would just have to change a bunch of constants. I wouldn't have to copy and paste code or declare a bunch of extra variables. I'd have to make sure that the array itself was declared to be larger. I'd have to make the loop run for more iterations, but I wouldn't have too much else to change besides, I guess, this B99 instead of B9. Okay, let's print out every element of B. So I'm going to again use a for loop for int i equals 0. i is less than 10 i plus plus. And then I want to print out b sub i. Uh, there we go. And then when I'm done, I'll print a new line because every, there, there wasn't any new line printed during the loop, so everything's going to be mashed together on the same line. So we'll try that out. Um, that's a good point, compiler. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Percent %f instead of percent %d. We'll try, uh, well, if I ran the version where I didn't use percent %f, I get a bunch of garbage output because I wasn't reading the directions properly. I try recompiling, I try running it again, and there it is, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, all the way up to 0 0.9. And so by using arrays, I can allocate a huge block for a large number of consecutive values that are related, which means I can now refer to them by index using expressions rather than just having a whole ton of different variables. Now, something to think about, not something I'm going to talk about in this video, but something that's actually very important that we worry about soon once we've gotten used to arrays, which is, okay, so I'm allowed to talk about b sub 0, b sub 3, b sub 7, but what happens if I ask for b sub 10, or b sub 11, or b subscript negative 5? What happens? So try it out. You can't, something strange will probably happen, but it's worth thinking about that. When does the compiler step in and say that you can't do it?